Today, we'll show how Flyway can now be used to manage changes to your Mongo database. This will work with any tech stack, but today we'll be making changes to your Mongo database using Studio 3T, committing migration scripts to GitHub, which will then trigger an automated GitHub Actions pipeline, deploying the changes to production. The demonstration uses Studio 3T, the most popular IDE for developing with Mongo, to script our changes to a development database, and then uses Flyway Desktop to add a corresponding versioned and undo migration script, after which we'll then deploy these changes to our test and production environments using our GitHub Action pipeline. And then finally, we'll show the status of the migrations successfully executed in Flyway Desktop and the corresponding changes to the target database in Studio 3T. We begin in Flyway Desktop, where we can see I have multiple projects for MySQL, Postgres, Snowflake, and now MongoDB. Let's go ahead and open the MongoDB project, where we'll currently better see that we have one migration script already written on this project, which creates the collection called Movies for me, and then adds a number of movies into that collection. It then inserts a, an index on that collection and also creates a view which shows me all of my movies by genre. We also have the corresponding undo script which drops the collection, drops my index and also drops the view that I've added as well. The task we're going to complete today is to add a new user to our database. To do this, we're going to use the version control side panel to add a new branch. So we'll go ahead and give our new branch a name. And we'll create our branch from there. We'll then go into Studio 3T, where we'll use this to generate the JavaScript to create our new user. So we go to Manage Users, and from here we we'll give our user a name, and a password, and we can grant roles to that user as well. But we won't add it in the graphical user interface will just show the code and we'll take the run command and we'll take that and we'll copy that into our migration in Flyway. Let's go ahead close that without saving. Going back into Flyway Desktop, we'll then add our migration. So we'll paste our code into the script and we'll be adding a version migration and we'll be adding, updating the description. And then we'll choose to save that. One thing I'll mention before I save this is that we're using a .js file here. So we're using JavaScript as our migration language for Mongo when we are using it against Flyway. So you can see now that our script is not undoable, so we haven't added an undo script for this migration. And one other point I'll mention at this point as well is given that we are storing a username and password in plain text, I'd not recommend doing this um, on any of your production environments. And I'd always recommend that you use a secret manager to encrypt the password as if you're using, creating new users as part of version control. So let's go ahead now and create our new undo script. Specify the same script name. Paste in our command to undo that. So this is where we would then drop the user and we'll save that. So we can now see that we have our script that I've saved against that. And we can see it's currently in a pending state. But before we actually run this in our pipeline, I just wanna quickly check that it works. 
Now I could use Flyway Desktop to do that just by clicking on the Run Migrate option here. But I just want to show you as well, you can use the Flyway CLI and Flyway Desktop interchangeably depending on the type of tooling that you want to use. So let's run Flyway Migrate. In my default configuration settings, I specified my development database as my default, which is why I can run Flyway Migrate without specifying an environment in the command line. And from here, you can see it's now running my version two migration against my development database. So the operation that it's performed is added my new user, Andrew Smith, to the database. And I can prove that just by going into Studio 3T and I can refresh my user list. And I can now see Andrew Smith as a user in the database. If I click on the Flyway Schema History table as well, I can see my new entry for version two within the table. Now that's fantastic, but I also want to check that I can use my undo script that I created before I push these to my downstream environments. So back into the Flyway CLI, and let's do a Flyway undo. And this will perform the reverse of the operation. So it's going to remove my user from the database, but it'll also insert a new entry into the Flyway Schema History table to show that it's done the undo operation. So for audit auditability, we can always go back into that date, the Schema History table and see everything that's happened on this database. So once the script has been run, I will jump back into Studio 3T and show you that. So all I need to do is just reload the schema history table and I can see my new entry for my undo script. And if I go back to the users, I can just refresh that view and my user has been removed. So now that I'm happy with all of my changes, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually then push these changes to my remote repository. I'll do that in Flyway Desktop. So I will push my, give it a meaningful, commit name I'll commit and push both of those so let's now go into github where I can see that I have a pull request ready for me So in GitHub, I can create my pull request so that the DBA knows that I'm ready for the changes to be reviewed. So I'm just putting the brief description of what I've done. And now let's submit that. So now let's pretend that with the DBA, we want to understand these changes before they get applied to the production database. So the pull request, as you can see, will include some comments about the purpose of the PR and the work that I've done. But more importantly, it's kicked off a number of series of automated tests, which test my changes on a blank database, allowing me to check that all of my changes work before I merge them into the main branch. These tests are running all of the versioned migration scripts to ensure that I have not changed anything that would cause a conflict with an earlier change. We can click on the details of those um, and you can see exactly what Flyway is doing as part of this. So this is the migrate build DB where it's actually then building my database um, from scratch and then publishing out the detail. Um, the details of it running, the migrations, um, and then we'll successfully complete. And as soon as the de developer is done, I can quickly loop back with comments and changes long before I need to deploy these out to production. But in this case that we're happy with the changes, I'm going to go back and improve the pull request.
So this change then gets merged into our main branch and we'll kick off another pipeline, which will then actually deploy these changes out to our test and production database. So if we go to GitHub Actions, so it's now actually onto the test stage. So again, I can see um, what's actually happening. And we're now at the point where it's actually going to, to run the latest migration for me on the test system. So here we can see, it's just reporting out that currently have one migration run, the next script is pending. It's now run my new script for me. So I can go into Studio 3T and I can refresh this view of the Flyway Schema History table for my test database. Um, and there you can see, it's run my second migration for me. Um, and if I go to the users for this database, we'll see that our user that we created has been added to that database. And my pipeline will now go and run this on production. So let's go back to the summary screen just so we can see. This is now deploying out to production and continuing, and that will be the final stage of my migration. So what have we seen? As a developer, I can work with my development database using Studio 3T to generate the necessary JavaScript to create a new user. We added this script as a migration script within Flyway Desktop. We also added an undo script should there ever be a need if a deployment ever fails. Um, and we tested that process of rollback using the Flyway CLI. And we tested that also on the actual separate branch that we created from within Flyway Desktop. We, show how, we showed how Flyway Desktop handled pushing those migration scripts into version control. We showed how as a DBA, I could be looped into the process using a pull request. We showed how running the automated test as part of our continuous integration process ensured my changes worked successfully. And importantly, we showed how Flyway would deploy those changes to each of these environments in my pipeline, so build, test, and production. Thank you for listening. I hope you will try out Flyway with MongoDB soon.